everyone. Welcome to another Book Review Wednesday, and today I'm going to be addressing the third book within the A Series of Unfortunate Events series, and that is The Wide Window. Um, now, if you don't know what happens within the previous two books, I would suggest that you look up my other book reviews that I've done for the past weeks that discuss the second as well as the first book. The first book being the first book that I talked about, and the second book being the second that I talked about, so I'm going in order. Um, but, uh, yeah, let us get started by talking about this third installment of the series. Um, so, if you haven't seen the second and first book review of the series that I did, go check that out before you watch this, because I think you won't be as confused if you do. So... Um, this third installment leaves off basically where we were at with the second book, and unfortunately the Baudelaire orphans have to end up finding another person to live with, um, and they end up being taken to their Aunt Josephine. And, uh, unlike the previous, uh, person they were with in the second book, Dr. Uh, Montgomery, I believe. Yes. Um, Aunt Josephine's character in particular is a little bit more crazy. Um, she has like these very bizarre phobias and she is somewhat naive and uh, she clearly doesn't really know how to raise kids, or at least raise kids all that well, um, and, uh, yeah, so she, she's kind of out of it, um, but you'll sort of see her, they, they sort of explain somewhat, uh, the reason behind that, um, but also, not only does this book, um, focus on a different owner, but we sort of get a similar but yet different plot going here. <laughs> Um, because within the second book, uh, you will see how the main villain ends up coming back and having an impact on the plot. Similar thing happens within the third book. Um, basically, uh, the main villain, Count Olaf, um, ends up sort of taking on this disguise, and, uh, this is, this ends up having a huge impact on the plot. Now, the plot is so much, is more so about sort of preventing a murder from occurring, as opposed to the second book where a murder took place. Um, and uh, I think that's really uh, sort of the, the focus of this book, because the children kind of know Count Olaf's scheme, and so they sort of try to work around it. And then there's all these different shenanigans that end up happening. And you you see somewhat similar things like the kids sort of working together and, you know, using their talents to sort of outwit the villain. And, you know, they're, they do all of these things. And the adults are kind of a little oblivious, uh, in particular their Aunt Josephine. But you could somewhat understand why why that is because she is rather naive and kind of kooky so um it only makes sense that they would be the most rational people within this particular story um but uh it, but me giving away anything else that happens within this book would definitely be spoiler territory and i don't want to ruin that for anyone but uh just to let you know it this book is i think more so about preventing something bad from happening than in the second book where we see a first actual murder take place so that's i think something uh, important to note as a distinction now is this pattern somewhat repeated throughout the series of you know count Olaf sort of showing up and, you know, causing trouble. Yeah, but uh, I think it builds up into something different. Um, this book, I would say, is a little bit on the more repetitive side of what we've seen in the series so far from what the second book was doing. 
but um, as far as a third installment is concerned, it, it's it's good. Um, you do want to know ultimately what ends up sort of happening and resulting from uh, this whole uh, sort of uh, shenanigans that end up happening, but. Uh, but also, I think there are other things that are, again, even more revealed about, you know, the, the Baudelaire's parents, um, all of that good stuff is also displayed within this third book. So, uh, I think that's also something that's very important to uh, note when it comes to this series, um, because... It's designed to be focused on them specifically, um, as long and as well with the main villain. Um, but over time, there are things that get a little bit more complex. I think this third book was just designed to be a builder upon the second book so much. Um, and uh, I, I would say I probably do prefer the second one over this one since I feel like it's take this book is taking a lot from what I've seen in the second book um but again there are still some things that are a little bit more um you know there there's little cookie crumbs and things like that that come within this book where you know you see certain things that end up being revealed and all that stuff so that's another thing that I think is just important to note it's it's uh it's a good follow-up. I would just say, as far as a third book is concerned, there are, I think, stronger ones out there. But I would definitely still recommend, if you want to read the series, then you can't skip books. And uh, and this one I don't think is worth uh, skipping because um, there is still some good information and good plot that's that takes place in this third book. I would just say just respect, uh, just expect certain things to sort of be kind of repeated a little bit. Um, but at the same time, there is they're still revealing new things. So it's kind of a mix of both of what the second book did and also being its own book, so to speak. But I think that's really ultimately all I can say about it with really not giving too much away. Um, but uh, yeah, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I would be more than happy to answer them, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.